Sonia, I wish we could just print more money. Then I'd be able to buy everything that I would like. Yes, that sounds like a good idea on the surface, but let's talk about the downsides of increasing the money supply first. Hey there, Curious Minds, it's your friend Sonia here with my curious friend Aldo. It's me, Aldo, your favourite fuzzy spider. Today, we're talking about something super important, money. And more importantly, why we can't just print more of it. But first, Sonia, what even is money? Can I eat it? Well, Aldo, money isn't something you'd want to munch on, but it has an incredible history. Money printer go brrrr! Huh, that's a funny meme, Aldo. Did you know that a long, long time ago, people didn't use money at all? They traded things like livestock, cows, sheep, and even camels. Can you imagine trading a chicken for some bread instead of using money? Whoa! Trading a chicken? What if I didn't have a chicken? And online payments would be a pain if I had to pay with a chicken. How many Robux do you think a chicken would get me? Online payments would be a pain. You'd have to fly the chicken to the online shop. I'm not sure how many Robux a chicken would get you. Maybe 1,000? I don't know. I don't think 1,000 Robux is enough. I'd have to chase down the chicken. Chickens eat spiders, so I would be taking a lot of risk to get my chick bucks. Those are great points, Aldo. Trading is much easier now. But here's the thing. Trading wasn't always easy. What if the person with the bread didn't want a chicken but needed shoes? Or what if someone didn't have a chicken like you mentioned? That's where precious metals came in. People started using shiny things like gold and silver because everyone agreed they were valuable. Gold and silver were easy to carry around and everyone knew they were worth something. But even that wasn't perfect. Carrying a lot of gold can get heavy, and it's not very safe. So people came up with a new idea. Paper money. Oh, I've seen paper money. It's like a promise, right? It used to be more than a promise, Aldo. Earlier in our history, many types of paper money were tied to precious metals, like gold. The money was tied to a fixed amount of gold, which you could trade for your money. The money itself had value. Cool! I can buy gold with money now, but I don't think the amount of gold I can buy stays the same. That's correct, Aldo. When the paper currency was fixed to an amount of gold, the amount of gold that you could get by exchanging your money didn't change. Ah, if the government wanted more paper money, would the government need more gold too? Exactly, Aldo. Money backed by gold stopped in 1971 for most countries in the West, including the United States, Canada, Western Europe and Australia. Making money is easier now, right? We don't need more gold to print more money. I could print money and buy a million chocolate chip cookies. Printing new paper money is easier without precious metals backing the currency, but there are downsides to increasing the money supply. Wait, who prints money now? Governments are responsible for printing money. Okay, so I need the government to print money for me. Then I can have my never-ending supply of cookies. What do you think, kids? What problems do you think we'd have if the government printed a million dollars for everyone? Those are good guesses, kids. Well... Here's the deal. If we just print more money, it wouldn't actually make us richer. In fact, it could make things worse. Huh? How could more money be a bad thing? I thought more is always better. Like more cookies, more toys, more everything. What if the people baking the cookies also had a million dollars? Then they may want more for their cookies. Or maybe they'd stop baking cookies because they didn't need more money any longer. Ah, uh, I didn't think about that. So we have the same issue we had before. They have cookies, and I have something they don't need. More money for everyone sounds like a great idea, but when there's too much money, it makes each dollar worth less. Imagine if everyone had a million dollars. Suddenly those chocolate chip cookies might cost a million dollars too. But that's only if there are enough cookies for everyone. More money doesn't mean that more cookies will be available. That's called inflation. When prices go up because money loses its value. So, printing more money is like turning cookies into crumbs. You get more, but they're tiny and not as good. That's a good metaphor. The Roman Empire caused inflation by reducing the amount of precious metals in each coin while keeping the same face value. That's like breaking pieces of cookies off to make more cookies. I'd be upset if I saw someone doing that. That's a good way to put it. 
So we've talked about why countries can't just print more money, but what about us? What if we could just print our own money at home? Brrr. <laughs> oh, oh, I know. I could print some money right now and buy all the cookies. What do you think, Sonia? Is that a good idea? Well, Aldo, it sounds fun, but here's the thing. If everyone could print their own money, it wouldn't be special anymore. Just like how we talked about inflation before, if everyone had lots of money, then it wouldn't be worth much at all. You might print enough to buy a mountain of cookies, but so would everyone else. So, if everyone prints money, then it's like having a treasure chest full of, well, nothing. That's no fun. But why can't I just print a little bit for myself? Great question, Aldo. What do you think, kids? What would happen if we all started printing our own money? The reason we can't print our own money is because it's illegal. Money needs to be trusted by everyone. And if people started making their own, nobody would know what's real and what's fake. That's why only the government is allowed to print money. They make sure it's real and everyone can trust it. So, if I printed money, it would be like pretending to be a superhero without any powers. It might look cool, but it wouldn't really work. Exactly, Aldo, and because we all use the same money that the government prints, we can trust that it's worth something when we go to the store or the bank. It's like a promise that what you're holding really has value. Countries have to be careful about how much money they print. It's a tricky balance. We want enough money for everyone to use, but not so much that it becomes worthless. Money works best when we all trust its value, and that's why we can't just print more money whenever we want. So, kids, remember, money isn't just about having more. It's about making sure it keeps its value so we can all use it to trade for things we need. OK, I guess I won't print my own money after all. I'll stick to drawing pictures instead. Much safer. Good idea, Aldo. And remember, kids, money isn't just about the paper or coins. It's about trust and making sure everyone can use it the same way. So, no printing money at home, but feel free to use your creativity in other ways. Now, what would you trade if we still used cows and chickens instead of money? Let us know on Facebook or X. I'd trade a spider web for a cookie any day. See you next time, Money Masters. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the fun. Thanks for watching. Sophia the Adventurer. See you next time.